Alright, stick your up. And get in at the negotiation. Hello again, and uh, welcome back. It's been absolutely ages since I made a, a workshop video, and there is a very good reason for that. Um, we've been in lockdown, of course. Uh, the um, little uh, outlet that I used to do some repairs for is unfortunately closed down, um, and uh, my bench, as you can see, is completely empty. Um, and uh, there's absolutely nothing to do. It's now the 10th of August, um, it's a very, very hot day, a very muggy day, and I quite frankly be glad when it gets a little bit cooler. Um, but uh, yes, everything is fairly deserted. Um, however, during this period I thought, well, my vintage stuff is kind of dried up, um, and uh, I haven't bought anything, I haven't been to a, um, anywhere to, to look for anything really. Um, because most places are, are closed or people aren't giving things into charity shops. So I thought I'd have a look at some of my books, my um, vintage radio repair books. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Um, but nothing to repair. Um, and, uh, well, what can one say? Um, I'll have a show you around the workshop just to show how empty things are. And... Uh, um, very, very little to do. Lots of equipment, lots of tools, all standing vacant. And I know this is only a hobby of mine, so it doesn't affect me too much, but it did, did keep me occupied, and uh, that's what I'm missing at the moment. Uh, and, um, well, let's have a look around. Well, there we are. There's my two main workbenches, totally deserted. Um, the one against the wall where I do... Uh, smaller stuff and uh, the one nearest to us where I do my um, record players and uh, larger radios and things like that are totally empty. Um, my uh, uh, oscilloscope hadn't been used for ages and I don't know the last time I actually turned on my waveform generator so um, a bit deserted there. The last job I did and if we swing around um, very gradually is the uh, the Tamburg um, reel to reel tape recorder that's still sitting there but that's all fixed so there's nothing much to do with that to do to that and my other bench where I do um, my mechanical stuff uh, that is again totally empty so um, it's all a bit grim really so that's why I'm going to talk in this video about my technical books early radio repair books for the first days of radio. And because I've got quite a lot of those books, um, we're going to leave the workshop now, it's hmm, a bit dead anyway, and pop down into my uh, music cellar and uh, have a look at the books, and that's where I store them. And do you know what? Do you know what? It's just too hot to lug them all up here. I did think of it. So let's move down there and have a look at some of those books. Ernest Hardcastle, whoever you are, this was your book in August of 1940 um, and it's the Radio Upkeep and Repairs for Amateurs and uh, this was published in 1940. Um, why am I reading this? Well as I've showed you uh, my workshop is pretty bare, uh, nothing to do there. Um, and a little while ago I ordered some vintage radio repair books off eBay and, uh, and I've also collected some in second hand shops and at the book barn. Um, and they make a very interesting read. They date from very early, uh, this one was 1940, but I do have them going back a lot earlier which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and I'll also have ones which are fairly modern. Um, the most modern one I've got, I think, is this one. Um, it's the third edition uh, of Vintage Radios um, by Tony Thompson. And this is a, a reprinted edition because the original is now very, very expensive. So I bought this one quite recently. And it, it goes into a lot of detail about repairing old radios, which is quite good and useful. Um, if you were wanting to take it up as a new hobby. My Bible was this one. 
um, Radial Repairs by G.N. Patchett and B. Fozard. And this is a one volume edition and this was published in 19, 21 shillings and it was published in 1960. Um, it was originally in different, uh, different editions. And when I was doing my radio um, and TV apprenticeship back in the 60s, this book was the Bible. It was used for all the city and guild exams. Um, it was used for the maths involved. And it goes into a great detail and a lot of explanation about um, radio um, and all the various aspects of it. Power supplies, frequency modulation, circuits, superheterodyne systems. Very good. And that is not my original book. I must admit, my original one um, was lost to time um, a while back, but this one I've managed to pick up again, and it brought back lots of memories. Radio Servicing by GN Patchett, so that's a good one. So, why should we be interested in these old books? Well, if you're going to be repairing or um, restoring old radios, they are very important. Um, yes, new books will give you all the information you need, but these old books were written at the time and that is really important. Well I'm not going to go through each book in turn that would be a little bit like watching paint dry and you'd all be asleep way before the end. But I want to, to use this video just to remind us that the skills and knowledge we used to have um, are still important today when we're restoring and repairing old radios. Um, replacing valves um, and uh, replacing and testing discrete components are all important skills and these books help us um, uh, or, or teach us um, if we've forgotten how to do and how to uh, encompass those skills. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope it's reminded you a, a little bit about some of the techniques and some of the things that uh, some of the skills that we used to have to have. So thank you for watching and um, thank you for having a look at uh, some of these books. I'm sure that many of them are still available on eBay um, and uh, if you're interested all the details of each book that I've talked about here are down below this video. Well thank you for watching and let's hope I'll have some jobs in the workshop to work on again soon. As always thank you for watching and take care. Alright, stick her up and get in at the negotiation.